Jesus. His name is Jesus. Lord, at the name, at your name, your word says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess you, Jesus Christ, as King of kings and Lord of lords. Lord, there's a room full of people right here that would thank you for being our Lord, our Savior. Thank you for the hand of rescue. Lord, I want to lift up those right now that are held captive by lies. That whatever the enemy has and whatever he wraps it as, whether it's depression, anxiety, it's all a lie. Lord, your name, just the mention of your name breaks that. I pray that whoever that is, it, it may be somebody in here today, it may be somebody we know, and we're going to stand in the gap for them right now. That, Lord, your name would ring true in their ears, in their heart, in their mind, and would begin to come out of their mouth to stand against the lies of the enemy. Lord, that those flaming darts, missiles from the enemy would not hit its mark any longer. That your people would reign in the name of Jesus. Reign for your glory. Because you are bigger. You're better. You're stronger. You're greater than anything we face. Lord, I thank you that our hope is in Jesus. That our hope is in the cross that you bore for us. Our hope is in your blood that poured out of your body to prove how much you loved us. That our hope is found in an empty tomb that you left. Because there ain't nothing can hold a good God down. Lord, I thank you that we can gather today in your name. The heavyweight champion of the world. Jesus Christ. Undefeated. 100% knockout. <laughs> Heavyweight champion of the world. Lord, we love you. Lord, give us ears to hear today. Thank you for loving us. Lord, I pray anything that I have predetermined that I'm going to say, Lord, if it's not your will, move it out the way. We want to hear from you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And this church said, Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. If you have your Bible, let's go to Luke chapter 5. Matthew, Mark, Luke 5. I got another prayer I want to pray. I want to pray that this, the ugliest shirt I've ever wore, <laughs> would not distract you from hearing the message. Your preacher lost a bet last week. Our Cowboys lost to the Eagles. So we have one lone Eagles fan in here that, yeah, and need to pray, pray for her. She may or may not be sitting over this way. But I lost. I honored that, and here it is. Here it is. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, and somehow a flag was in my yard this morning as well. The neighbors weren't very happy. They were saying ugly things to my kids. <laughs> oh, we got another shot at them, though, don't we? All right, and then maybe she'll have to wear a cowboy shirt. Anyway, we cowboy folk, right? All right. So don't think that I'm crazy, okay? I'm just trying to keep my word. <laughs> Luke chapter 5. So have you ever thought about this? What happens when your net breaks? What, happen when, what happens when your net breaks? Yeah. <laughs> 
What happens when you're net break? What happens when you come to the end of your rope? What happens when there's a breaking point in your life? That's what I want to talk about today. I want to jump into this in, in, in chapter 5 in Luke and, and start in verse 1. I'm going to read these and then we're going to go back and we're just going to look at it. And, and, and I asked the Lord to speak, speak to us, man. This is, this is some good stuff here today. So verse 1 says, As the multitude pressed about Jesus, they wanted to hear the word of God, and he stood by the lake of Genereset. And he saw there was two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen, they'd done finished with the boats, and they'd gone from them. They was over there washing their nets. So then Jesus gets into one of the boats, which was Simon. This is Peter, okay? And he asked him, hey, can you scoop me out a little bit from the land right here? And he sat down and he began to teach the multitudes from the boat. Now, if you've ever been on the water and you hear people talking across the water, it sounds like they're right next to you. And they're not. They're way over there. But you can hear what they're talking about. <laughs> it's like... They're, not, they're, they're being so loud. No, it's not that. The water will carry sound. So I think it was brilliant. Jesus didn't have a microphone. I guess he could have turned the one on that he does have in his throat if he needed to. But he did. He let the water, he backed off the shore. He let the water take his voice out to the people. Is this making sense? Okay. So when he stopped speaking, verse, verse, uh, verse 4, uh, he said to Simon, he said, Now... I appreciate you, man. This is, this is, this is, he's, he's pretty much saying, man, I appreciate you. He said, launch out now into the deep. Now let down your nets for a catch. Okay, now I don't want you to get this story mixed up to, to when this same thing's kind of happening when Jesus was resurrected. Okay, these are two different stories. This is, this is basically when Jesus meets Peter. Okay, now watch what he said. But Simon answered and said, uh, stick to preaching. Uh, we know how to catch fish, <laughs> right? <laughs> Is that what he said? <laughs> kind of. Watch what he said. He said, Master, we've we fished all night. We've toiled all night, and we ain't caught a, a darn thing, right? <laughs> Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the, the, the net, okay? If you look back at verse 4, he, Jesus told him to launch out your nets, but Simon said, I think I got an old raggedy net over here. I'll just use this one net. You got you to watch this. It's be real specific. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their net, one, right, was what? Breaking. So they signaled to their partners, their friends, in the other boat. And they said, man, we need some help. Y'all come over here. And they came. They filled the boats. So they were beginning to sink. Filled it with what? Fish. That's a good day. So when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' feet and knees. And he said, depart from me. I ain't nothing but a sinful man. Oh, Lord. I mean, I fished all night. ain't caught a thing. But Jesus, man, he hooked him up. <laughs> For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. Man, what a story. Now, I've taught this before, and, 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 I've, and I've taught it to just to the point of, hey, you know, we're not fully trusting Jesus. He, he says, let your nets down, and then we just let our net down, okay? It's, it's like we're, 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 we're tipping our toe. You know, you, know, you, you say, man... Uh, you, you invite somebody to church. You say, man, y'all come to church. Uh, man, at least come for a month. Get you a good dose of it, you know, and somebody will come one time, you know. Are, are, we, are, we, are you going to go all in? Are you going to burn the ship, you know? Are you, gonna, are you just going to put your toe in? And that's kind of what Peter was doing here when he didn't really trust Jesus. Remember, he's the professional fisherman, so he's thinking, Jesus, you don't really know what you're talking about. You're a preacher, so I'm just going to use my net. Okay, well, that's the way I usually taught this thing, okay? Using one old net, not nets. But as I go through this, man, I feel like the Lord had just showed me so many other things, and I want to show this with you, show this to you, okay? Here's the, here's the one extra thing that I saw this time through. 
Notice that Peter has a fishing business, okay? He's got a couple of boats. The Lord's been blessing him already, right? Okay? But what happens when he allows Jesus to use his business for his glory? You ever thought about it like that? Notice what it said. Verse 6, they caught a great number of fish. Verse 7 said it, the, so many fish that it, that, it, that it filled both boats. Man, I mean, we can't skip over this stuff. When you allow Jesus to use your business for his glory, what is he going to do? He's going to bless you. Church, he can bless every single area of your life. It doesn't have to just be your Sundays and Wednesdays. He can bless every single area of your life. We have to get this mentality where it's, we're keeping him in a box on Sunday. Again, I say this all the time. I don't lock Jesus up in here when I leave. Okay? He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. We need to live like that. L listen, he didn't create you just to come to church. This is the fueling station. He didn't create your car or your truck to just sit down there at the gas pump. No, you get full so you can go. And what does all of us, basically all of us, have to do for the most part? We all got to go to work. If you want to eat and you want to have some clothes on you and you want to have this and have that, you got to go to work. Okay? We spend most of our time where? At work. Why not honor Jesus where you work? We got to stop being two people. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, you, you, you're one way here and another way there. That makes no sense. You, there's no way you would talk like that there, here. And why are you talking like that there? Why, why are you looking at that there? You see what I'm saying? Jesus can bless every area of your life. Listen, he can use us in every area of our life. What, what you, you can bring, listen, you can make any place a sanctuary. Especially if you got some pull at your job. Have you done this yet? Where you go in on a Monday morning or every morning and say, guys, this is the day the Lord has made. Okay, let's honor him with it. Thank him for breath in our lungs today. You grab your little group together or whatever and pray and then get, get busy. And I guarantee you all the backbiting, all the smart mouth and all the... So you watch that go by the wayside. Why? Because you honored God. Is this making sense to anybody? Jesus wants to be in every part of our life. Amen? And, and then you got to ask yourself, well, wh wh which place is the true me? Is the true me really at work and I'm just being a hypocrite at church? You know what I'm saying? I mean, what is it? Who is the real you? I hope this makes sense. Now, here's another thing that I, that I feel like the Lord showed me. And this is where I want to go with all this this morning. But let's, let's read it again, starting in verse 6. It says, when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So then Peter signaled to his partners, his friends, in the other boat to come and help, and they filled up both boats. The boat began to sink. But because of all this, and out in front of God and everybody, what does verse 8 say? It said, Simon Peter saw this. He fell at Jesus' knees. He, he fell on his knees. He, he fell in front of Jesus. What did he say? He said, Lord, you got you to gotta get up from around me. I'm just, a, I'm just a broken, nasty old boy. What, what did he do? He just, all of a sudden, he, Peter had conviction. Because he then, at that moment, he believed Jesus was who he says he was. Remember, they're over there washing nets. Right? They're washing nets. Jesus is preaching. Okay, he's saying all kind of good stuff they, them, them, them fishermen need to hear. And he's, they doing it, and they listening. They washing, they listening. And then when he says, hey, appreciate the boat, and if you'll come right out of here and throw right there, you'll catch, you'll catch some fish. I hear you, preacher. I hear you, preacher. I hear you, preacher. I hear you, preacher. All right. And see, it's the same way of me telling y'all. Put this stuff to practice out there. 
And then you're going to come back and say, man, Brother Scotty, they listening. They listening to me about Jesus. Yeah. Because that's what they do. They're going to listen. They're going to listen. Listen. <laughs> he goes, puts the nets down, catches the fish. Then he realizes, oh, Lord. You, what, you, what, what he just blessed him in right then was like two bo- like a, the biggest catch they've ever had. They, I mean, he just prospered hugely. So he falls down. He's, and, and it's, isn't it funny how he just prospered, but he falls down and he tells Jesus, I'm just a sinful man, Lord. Notice he called him Lord. When you call Jesus Lord, you're saying you are my owner, my boss, my ruler, my all. My personal God, Lord, Yahweh, right? Personal God, Jehovah, personal God. You're my God. That's what Peter was saying. And the moment he did that, conviction fell on him. And he realized, this is so beautiful. Okay, so what just happened? The broken net was just a symbol of what happened in Peter's heart. The net was broke. But who was really broke was Peter. And I bet you there was a bunch, bunch of others there that day. Okay? So the broken net become the breaking point for Peter, and that breaking point caused him to fall on his face and do what? Repent. Church, we got to repent. We got to come to a spot in our life where we got to say, Mm-mm-mm. I'm a sinful man. I'm a sinful woman. I got to turn from this mess. I can't keep down going down this road. It's not right. I got to honor my Lord. So obviously they all saw the preaching. They saw the power. They saw the love of Jesus that day. And it was beautiful. So let me ask you this. How many people have you seen come to Jesus because they hit rock bottom or they become to a breaking point? You think of anybody in your life? Maybe that was you. Maybe that's your testimony. Like, like you had to hit rock bottom. People had to get out of the way and quit enabling you and finally let you hit. Boom! Now, you can go look this up, but wood ducks, wood ducks, God has built them in a certain way when they're a baby. If they don't get pushed out the nest and hit either the ground or the water hard, It's that hard hit that makes them fly. It jars them and makes them fly. So if they never get pushed out of the nest, and if they never hit hard, they never will fly. Isn't that something? But we're, we're, we're the same way. We're the same way. Some of us, we gotta like finally say, man, I done tried everything I could try, and 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 there's still something wrong. I got this, I got that, I was with them, and I was with that, and I did this, and none of that. I'm still, I'm like, I'm worse than I began. You know, I'm like, what's wrong? None of this is fulfilling me. And said, Lord, I, Lord says, yeah, that's right. You finally at rock bottom. Now look up. Now look up. You know anybody like that? See, here's the deal. A breaking point can push us to the right place. Yeah. How many, of us, how many of us in church right now because things wasn't so good? And we're like, man, we got we to gotta do something here. We got to figure something out. We're, and we run to Jesus. Good choice. So not even the breaking point would send you to the right place. The breaking point will send you to the right one. And the right one is Jesus. One we've been singing about for the last 30, 45 minutes. But here's where I want to shift a little bit. And I want to tell you something else a breaking point will do. It will send you to the right relationships too. It, it, it'll send you to Jesus. And it'll send you to the right folk. See, in the South, we're folk. Right? <laughs> now, look at it. Verse 6 and 7. There's so much here. He says, when they'd done this, they caught all these fish. The net was breaking. And it says that he signaled to his partners. Now, these are his friends. Okay? They're his friends, and they're in the same business. Okay? They're not competitors. Okay? So he calls for his friends, right, to come and help. 
Isn't it something when we get to that breaking point and our nets are breaking in our life, it's amazing how God will send people at the right time. Mm, mm, mm. Friends, a, a, a rock bottom and a breaking point will cause your true friends to rise up. Let me give you an example of this. Go to, uh, you can leave Luke. Don't forget about Luke, though. Go to Exodus 17. Exodus 17. You ought to know where that is. We was in Exodus for a long time. Second book of the Bible. Is this coming together in your mind yet? That was four of you. Let me, run, let me, leak, let me go back through here. <laughs> Exodus 17 now let me say that again so you'll know a breaking point when your net breaks when you've hit the end of your rope it's done got too heavy for you to haul and you start looking around, and, 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 and that's where you find Jesus. But then you do realize, if you, if you want to feel Jesus' love, that's when people come in. If God, if God was going to, if God said, man, I really want to show them how much I love them. What would he do? Would he, would he just break back the realm and just say, come here? Oh, you don't you know he would love to do that? Jesus even talks about how he, he would be like a hen and gather his chicks under his wing. Okay? That's what he wants to do. But right now, the way it's all set up, he's going to love on you through people. But if you don't recognize those people in your life and what they're there for, you could miss it. No, oh, don't be bothering me. I got this. I can handle this. You know anybody about it? like it ain't you. Maybe it's somebody that came last week. I can do this on my own. That was funny, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't you. Somebody come last week, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, watch this. I don't know if you've seen this. Talking about this. Uh, verse eight. Amalek came to fight with Israel. You don't. You don't mess with Israel. They finding that out right now. You don't mess with Israel. Okay, so Moses said to Joshua, all right, here's what we got to do. You got to choose some men. We're going to fight Amalek. So tomorrow I want you to go out and stand on top of the hill. I want you to hold that rod you've been using, that rod of God in my hand. Okay, and Joshua did as Moses said. They fought against Amalek. Moses, watch this, Moses, Aaron, and her. Now that ain't a lady. Okay. <laughs> It could be Ben Hur, no, no. <laughs> Moses, A. A. Ron, right, and Hur. Okay, what do they do? They're going up to the top of the hill. So Joshua and Israel are fighting down there in the valley. Moses, Aaron, and Hur are up here. Okay, watch verse eleven. And it was so when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, and when he let his hand down. Amalek prevailed. What you say? So if he held a rod up in his hand like this, Israel was winning. Go boys, go boys, go boys, go boys. Oh my God. Oh man, dead gum. Oh Lord. Oh no. Amalek winning. Let me try this hand. Go boys. Go boys. They winning. Yay. Oh. And man, he's just wearing himself out. Watch this. Now, now don't think we're just talking about some Old Testament story. This really happened. And it happens in our life too. When you're at your best and you are dialed in with the Lord, you're hanging on strong, your prayer life is good, man, Jesus is good to you, everything is good. But the moment you, uh, every, your posture changes and you start believing the lies, the enemy starts winning. So what do we do? Moses' hands became heavy. Have you ever walked around heavy? You may have came in heavy today. If, they, if you came in heavy today, you're going, oh, my goodness. 
Brother Scotty, you've been listening to me. You've been, you tap my phone at my, you read my text message. No. God is bigger, he's better, he's stronger, he's greater than anything. So they, who is they? It would be Aaron, right? And her, okay? They took a stone, put it up under uh, Moses, and said, Moses, sit down, sit down. And then Aaron and her supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other. That right there tells me Moses had to be pretty tall because they couldn't reach. Like he was here, they couldn't reach him, right? He had to sit down. Moses, you write this in your notes, Moses possibly could have dunked. That's, my, that's Moses, man. He's the one who let him out. He let him out. He's like a point guard that can dunk. <laughs> Y'all crazy. So watch this. One on one side, one on the other. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Come on, somebody. That's good right there. So what did we learn there? Thank you, Lord, for those people in our life that you sinned when we can't do it anymore. Thank you, Lord. Man, as prideful as we are, thank you, Lord, for sending them people in our life. Church, we all need somebody. We can't do it on our own. I don't care who you are. We cannot do it all. Even the alone, alone ranger, lone, you do realize lone ranger means he's by his, he's a lone, (laughs) right? No. Was he really alone? He had Tonto (laughs) and a horse, right? So Tonto, even the lone ranger had a Tonto. You need a Tonto. Who is your Tonto? Huh? Okay, so listen to me, because we got to see both sides of this. Sometimes we're Moses, and we're give slam out at the end of our rope. Our net has just broken. But sometimes we may be Aaron or her, right? And we say, Moses, whoever Moses is to you in your life, sit down, buddy. Sit down, sweetie. I got you. You, you, ladies, you may, you may have to, you may have a friend. Them kids are driving her crazy. She's at the end of her rope. Depression's hitting her house, and you go over there and you say, "Sweetie, you need to go to bed. I got these kids." Huh? I don't know. I'm just saying. I mean, just giving you an example. Think about that. Sometimes we're providing the help, but sometimes we need it. And you got to recognize it. And that's the prayer. Lord, let me recognize it, please. Because I want you to use me. And when I'm, when I'm strong and when I'm able to be used, man, use me. Because we want to help, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 and 10 says this. Two are better than one. Isn't that good? It says that they have a good reward for their what? Their labor. It says if one falls, hey, the other one's there to pick them up. Let me tell you something. Tina's got a daughter sitting over here named Melanie. And we was out setting up a little old deer stand. But she's sinking down over there. <laughs> and she's following me and Shane around in the woods. Like, I got this. Just ripping briars, briars in her arm, just ripping it off like that. Just, I got this. I got it. We're good. We're good. We pick a spot. She said, what you want me to do? 
you know. She starts cutting briars. Then we go unload the truck. I pull out some lightweight stuff. Like, a, here, I got a bucket. I got some little things here you can just carry, you know. Well, Shane picks that stuff up. <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> Melanie, 50-pound sack, not a 40-pound sack of corn. <laughs> just kind of... I said, dang, girl. I said, what are you doing? She said, I do this all the time. <laughs> Put it on the ground and go get another one. I was like, I said, Shane. I said, really? He said, you grab it. I said, I got to hurt you. <laughs> yeah. And then bless her heart, she coming around, she do it like we do. And, and right before it, she had the last bag of corn. She, she, she hit a little old uh, stump with her foot and she fell down. And then Shane come behind. Hey, the one that don't, the one ain't doing it, help her up. You all right? I'm good. You know what I'm saying? But let me tell you something. If you need some corn hauled or <laughs> cutting wood, you need to come see Melanie. Get with Tina. She'll hook you up. Right? That girl, that girl is bad to the bone, and she's ready to kill a deer, too. So, anyway, so, so it's better if there's two of you if one falls. You knew I was going to use that, didn't you, yeah, as, a, as something. I told her, I said, you just gave me a sermon illustration. <laughs> so, would you agree that two is better than one? Two boats? Right? Two boats are better than one. We just read that, right? Two nets, right? Better than one. Two friends are better than one. Why? Because everyone are limited. We- listen, listen, listen. Some, I know some of you don't even like this. But we are limited until we gain a relationship. Let, 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 let me give you another example. <laughs> okay? The all-knowing, all-powerful God, in Genesis 2, he looks at Adam, and I think it's in verse 18. I got it written down. I don't know why I'm guessing. Genesis 2, verse 18. He looks at Adam, the all-powerful God, and he says this. It's not good that man is alone. What was his answer for Adam? He added to the Adams family. He did. He, right? Da-da-da-da. Get it? The Adams family. Okay? So, so if Almighty God did that, he just proved a point when he said, it's not good that man bees alone. He didn't say it like that, but. <laughs> yeah. The South side, he might say. Anyway, we, here's what we, we all need friends, man. We need relationships. We're going to get sick. Car going to break down. We're going to have something that's got too much weight. We are not self-sufficient. Let me give you a... Since we're in Exodus, look, uh, look at Exodus 18. Look at verse 13. Here's another story for you. Now, this is, if you're in leadership somewhere in what you do, you need to listen to this. Okay? Seriously, you need, to, you need to really listen to this, okay? Verse 13. So it was on the next day that Moses, now notice what he did. He used to set and judge the people. Now, before you think he's just shame on you, shame on you, that's, that's not what he's doing, but watch, watch it. Watch it play out. It said the people stood before Moses from morning to evening. Now think about that. Now, now, picture just a line of complainers, okay? That's, that's basically what he's doing. He's got a line of complainers, and here he is, okay? So watch this. <laughs> so Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did for the people, and he says, young man, he said, what's this thing you're doing for the people? And watch this. Why do you... Alone sit. You see it? You sit alone, and all the people stand before you from morning to evening. And Moses says, it's because the people come to me to, to know what the Lord's going to say, going to inquire of God. Okay? 
He said, when they have difficulty, they come to me and they judge between one another, another and I, I make known the statutes of God and his laws. Okay? Good stuff. So Moses' father-in-law said to him, Church, listen to me. Listen, okay? He said, the thing that you're doing is not good. Now, the th what he's doing for the people is good. But, 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 but the part he's getting to, watch this, watch this. The thing that you're doing is not good. He said, both you and these people with you, you will surely wear yourselves out. Okay? You got one man trying to do everything for everybody. Y'all listening? One thing, one man trying to do everything for everybody. He said, this thing is too much for you. You are not able to do this by yourself. Okay, just stop right there. Are you trying to do too much? Because if you are, you know you can get this at church today. Because if you are, the Lord is saying in his word, you're going to wear yourself out. You're going to burn out. You're going to wear out. And then, and then guess what? The people, and you can use this ministry as well, you're, not, you're going to start not giving good counsel because it's almost like you're going to say whatever needs to be said or you're, going to, you're not going to do it in the right way. You may not be able to give sound counsel because it's too much. You're wore out. You just want to get them out from, from in front of you. So you're not able to spend the time that you need to on each person. Is this making any sense to anybody? Okay. So here's what he said, do. You ready for this? And, I, and you got to say, hey, how does, this, how does this work in my life? Just jump to verse 21. He said, select people that are able folk, able men, but men who fear God. Yes, right? Men of truth. They're passionate. They don't like covetousness, right? Place them over Thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. In other words, whatever you think that guy can handle, let him do that. You got to talk. You got to think. We're talking about three or four million people. Moses give out. Let them judge the people at all times. Then it will be that every great matter they shall bring to you, every small matter, they can handle it. You see it? So it will be easier for you and they will not, they will bear the burden, uh-oh, what? With you. If you do this thing, God so commands you, God is commanding you, God is commanding you, then you'll be able to endure, and all his people will also go to their place in peace. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know what you do at work, but if you're wearing yourself out, you got to get some help. Don't delay any longer. Amen. <laughs> Seriously. And I know some of you hard-headed rascals, you, you're like, nah, 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 I got it. Can't nobody do it like me. Train them like you. I tell my wife all the time. She's like, <laughs> I, ain't gonna do this. I can't do it as good as she does. That's all I'm going to say. I say, baby, train me. Train me. I, I would love to look at you as my teacher. That's sexy. Show me how you spray the spray and wipe the wipe, right? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all crazy, man. Go to Galatians 6. <laughs> wasn't, there, wasn't there a song of that? Van Halen, maybe? Yeah. Hey, a teacher's a teacher. Man, everybody's leaving. Man, I'm, I'm offending y'all. Y'all wrong and I. And Chris, your wife's a teacher. <laughs> oh, here we go. Teachers don't want to come home and teach. I get it. Okay. So, so, so ah, man. Church, we need people. We got to have help. Do you agree with that? Or are you a hard head? Oh, oh, oh. That's a donkey. That's a, that's a donkey for you. I'm telling you what. There, there, I, I'm so thankful for the friend. I look back over my life. I'm telling you one time, there, back in Arkansas, that 
we had a lot of rivers down there, right? So we, we was catching fish, you know, and, and, and there was a river, but it didn't seem that deep, you know, but we was catching them over there, right? And I was tired of bringing the fish from over there to the truck over here. So I looked at the water, but you don't, I don't ever consider how heavy the truck is, right? And I say, I can cross that. Now, you would think I got this big jacked up truck. No, I got a little Nissan, my first truck, a little Nissan, like 84 Nissan, right? Right? <laughs> Two wheel drive, right? So here I go. I'm asking my cousin that's with me, we good? Oh, man, good. come on, you good. Going across this road, this water, water rushing over, but I got to get closer to the fish, right? You, we good? Yeah, we good. Come on, all right? A little bit more, a little bit more. Y'all good? Mm, yeah, 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 we good? Yeah. And I was like, what is that? Like, <laughs> the water's in my truck, man. I'm like, I'm sitting like I'm sitting in water. And then the truck starts going. I was like, oh, oh. I said, man, <laughs> I thought you, well, you about to come out of it? As, as, uh, I'm, I'm committed now. Let's go. Mm, and it watered up to here like no 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 <laughs> then I couldn't go either way thank the Lord for that stump that was right here that my truck went up against right I'm sitting there and I don't know what to do man I'm the, and for whatever the Lord sent this big truck coming down after there about four or five hours later I didn't, I'm serious we were like an hour and a half from home in the woods nobody knew where we was we didn't have cell phones beepers none of that stuff like nobody knew where we were Okay, I think we skipped school. I mean, anyway, <laughs> we'd have been missing, right? The guy pulls me out. I got the truck started. <laughs> and I just said, what is that white stuff pouring out my tailpipe? <laughs> said, well, that's my oil. <laughs> anyway, I make it home, right? Pull up. My daddy said, why is your truck smoking? And I said, I said man, I'll run this thing off in the river. So guess what? My truck needed an engine. <laughs> and guess who couldn't pay for the engine? <laughs> Me. And my truck sat right there. I'm 17 years old, had no ride, nothing. 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 Sitting in there mad, watching TV. A couple weeks later, man, here come my friends by. Friends came by, heard the bass coming out the woofers out there. Come on, buddy. Let's go to town. Let's go get something to eat. See, that's what friends do, man. I said, now let me have some money so I can get me a new engine. <laughs> <laughs> but but we, we all need friends. I, I, I think, man, I've been out there on numerous occasions power washing, man, and, and it'd be cold and I got like too much to do. And I remember Chance ain't here this morning, but once I, I didn't know Cody had called him. Man, he shows up like it's 35 degrees and raining. Dude gets out there right beside me and just starts working right beside me. Then he wouldn't let me pay him. Shane did the same thing the other day. I think they got, they got off early at the fence company, and he came out there where his daddy was. That's odd. But I'm just telling you, he came out there and helped me out of a bad situation. We need people in our life. It, you, you got your stories too, right, where people just show up. Did you ever make it to Galatians 6? Okay. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> I know I'm preached too long sometimes. Thank y'all. Hey, hey. Well, we got to make the point, right? Okay. Brethren, if a man, or put your name in there, if Scotty Wayne Five is overtaken in a trespass, okay, or caught in a trespass. In other words, okay, that word trespass right there, you look it up in the Greek, means fault. Now, read it like that. Say, say, if you look at somebody and it's another man's fault, can we say it like that? If a man is at fault... You who are spiritual, now would you, would you say you're spiritual? Now, that ain't a trick question. Are you spiritual? All right, that's four. Anybody else spiritual? You would say, yes, I'm spiritual because you are a spirit. <laughs> we serve a God who is capital S spirit. Okay, you are spiritual. All right, I'll just answer that for you. Okay? In other words, you're a godly man or you're a godly woman. Okay? You said yes? Okay. So you that are a godly man or godly woman that said yes, 
such a one in a spirit of gentleness, consider yourself, lest you be also tempted. Okay, read that again. You who are spiritual, restore. You who are godly, restore who? The one that, that was in fault. Okay? Now listen to this because you know, you know when we say, it ain't my fault. As soon as we say it's their fault and not our fault, that is usually an excuse for us to stay out of it. Tell the truth. It ain't my fault. They shouldn't have spent all their money, you know. I ain't helping you. <laughs> you knew better, right? But does it say that? No, it says, it says when, when there's a man caught in a trespass, caught in a fault, and, and he said, you that's spiritual, you that is a godly man or godly woman, what does he say? Restore them. Restore them. Because it goes on to say, unless you be tempted. What are you going to be tempted? You're going to be tempted to mouth about them. Huh? You're going to be tempted to do all these other things. And, and, and let me tell you, that'll get to you because you know you should help. Verse 2 says, bear one another's burdens and fulfill the law of the Christ. You hear that? Our heart should be restoration. Okay? What if it was us who was in the fault? Man, I messed up. Oh, man, I messed up. I wish I had somebody that wouldn't judge me. Right? I had a bad day. I messed up. I wish, man, I know it's not your fault, but would you help me? Instead of judge me? Yeah? Man, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, this means so much to me. Thank you. Thank you. What are you doing? You're bearing one another's burdens. What does it say when you do that? You fulfill the law of Christ. Okay? Instead of getting all crazy, like, what's the law of Christ? Okay, that, that word law literally means walk. Now read it like that. Bear one another's burdens and you fulfill the walk of Christ. What does that mean? Walk like Jesus did. Right? When you bear one another's burdens, you are being like Jesus. Yes. Yes. When you bear one another's burdens, you are being like Jesus. When you restore somebody, when you help restore somebody, you are being like Jesus. When you are there for somebody, you are being like Jesus. And I keep, I'll use this again, but ladies, when you go help that young mama that can't handle it anymore and you let her go to bed, you're being like Jesus. God uses relationships to love on one another. Let's go to Romans 1. I'll start wrapping up right here. Romans 1. Is this making sense? Because, man, when you break, when your net breaks, you don't want to be alone. Have you been alone when your net breaks? It wasn't fun, was it? Anybody feel alone right now? You need somebody. First of all, sometimes you got to tell somebody. We can't read your mind. Mm. That was a little heavy, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I got this. Now, nah, I'm tough. Shh. No, you stupid. <laughs> Man, I saw, <laughs> I saw on the Insta flash. <laughs> it would look like. It looked like I wish Sean was here. Man, wasn't it good to see Sean and Rose? Man, they are awesome. They'll be back. They, they're gone for 10 days. All right. So all these Amish folk had to be 200 of them. They picked up a church. You see that? Looked like ants. I mean, ants. <laughs> ants do it. The Amish can too. And they, I'm talking, they moved a church. Okay? But one of them had to say, you know what? I need to get this church moved. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to move on. I'm going to do this. Pick up the... Well, they don't have phones. Uh, <laughs> send out the dove with a letter. <laughs> Neighbor, I need you. <laughs> no. What happened? 
the word got out. Everybody show up on Saturday, and we're going to move to church. Okay? And they all got in. One, two, three. Whew. Go look it up. Look it on Insta, uh, whatever it is. You can probably see it on YouTube. Go to YouTube, put Amish moving to church or moving a building, whatever it is, and watch them. But the first guy had to call somebody, right? It's the same thing with you and me. Now, let me just say this. I'm going to say this is so I, I, This is what I've been waiting on to show y'all. Listen, there are relationships in our life, seriously, that are just for a season. Okay, that's true. That's true. But there are some relationships in our life that need to remain. In other words, they need to be in your life from, from, from now on. Okay? They're meant to remain. Okay? The devil wants to tear it down. But there's two things, at least two things you've got to do if you want that to remain. I know this is a different kind of message, but we, unity, God speaks unity all the time. Okay? Here's two things, at least two things. One, we've got to recognize that that relationship is so important to us. And the second thing is we need to celebrate that relationship. Okay? Just those two things. Just start right there. We need to recognize because, see, what we don't recognize can't benefit you. Hmm? If you don't see that person in your life as, 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 as valuable, then you won't celebrate them. Okay? So we think about it. Okay. And listen. Ooh, this goes for marriage, too. I told her I loved her when I married her. <laughs> and if it changes, I'll let you know. Men, is that right? No man said a thing. One lady said, no. Men, is, men, that is not right. Okay? Okay, I just said you need to recognize her. You need to c celebrate her. Yes. Yes. Me, can I get an amen from a man? Hey. <laughs> Amen. I like the bass. <laughs> Listen, okay. I, I, everybody got some kind of good in them. Okay? Find the good. He, he may just be a hard worker. Okay? Hard workers put roofs over your head and put food on the table, right? Okay. That's the one good thing you can find right now. Celebrate that. And men, you ain't going to have to look far if you've got a good woman to find things to celebrate about that. Okay, ready? I want to show you this. I can't wait to show you this. Here we go. You ready? Okay. Romans 1, verse 8. Okay, Paul, Apostle Paul is writing a letter to the Roman church. He loves them, and you'll see what he does. Okay, you ready? This is so simple, but so powerful. I, okay, I highlighted these. There's, there's things here. This is how you recognize a relationship. This is how you celebrate a relationship. You ready? First, first somebody say first. First, 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 first church. First friend. First burden bearer. First you in my life. I thank my God for you. I thank my God through Jesus for you all. Now, if that was me talking to y'all, I'd say y'all. Yes, right. Country. You all. Right? See, y'all think this is silly. It is not. First thing, be thankful for them. Thank you, Jesus, that they are in my life. I stop taking them for granted in Jesus' name right now. Thank you, my God, through Jesus, for you all, that your faith is spoken throughout the whole world. I've been hearing about y'all. 
Okay, for God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in what? Prayer. Here we go. Here's the road. Follow the trail. First, I'm thankful for you. Now I'm praying for you. Come on, somebody. I, oh, I, I'm so thankful for you. And that's why you are always on my mind. Who sings that one? Huh? You saw it, didn't you? That's it. Sing it. Sing it a little bit, Amanda. Wait, that's a man, isn't it? That's Willie. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You are always on my mind. So when you're on my mind, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to tell you right now, when you pop up in my mind, I'm going to pray for you. Chris, Chris hit us up the other day. He hit me up. He said, brother, you've been on my mind all day. He said, I'm praying for you. Are you okay? I'm praying for you. I thank the Lord for he even told us he loved us. Man sitting right there. You know what that does for me? It makes me, it reminds me that my God is bigger. He's better. He's stronger. He's greater. Anything we face. And I'm thankful for relationships like Chris. Thank you, brother. So, so number one, first, I'm thankful for you. I'm praying for you. Keep reading. Making requests if by some means now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. I want to come to you. Watch this. For I long to see you. I thank God for you. I pray for you. I can't wait to see you. Is this making sense? Is this silly? Hmm? I pray for you. I think I'm thankful for you. I pray for you. Oh, I just can't wait to see you. Huh? Huh? I can't wait to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift. I got something. I got something for you. I'm thankful for you. I'm praying for you. I can't wait to see you. Now I got something for you. It's a spiritual gift. Well, what's a spiritual gift? Is it $10? No, it's a spiritual gift. $100? No. <laughs> right? It ain't tangible. I'm here. I'm thankful for you. I'm praying for you. I can't wait to see you. And when I see you, I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to build you up. I'm going to tell you how much I love you because I just can't wait to see you. Mm. Church, this is good. This is real good. This is how we should be. Notice what he said. For I long to see you that I may impart some gift, spiritual gift to you so that you may be established that that is I may be encouraged together with you. Watch this. In the mutual faith that we both share. Oh, that's the next thing. Okay, man, we came. This is good. You think it's been silly, but this is good. Okay? I'm thankful for you. I've been praying for you. I can't wait to see you. And when I see you, I got something for you. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to build you up. And then when I'm with you, guess what we're going to do? We're going to celebrate what we have in common. And that is our faith. Let's go. Right? Come on with it. We, we, we're going to celebrate what we have in common. And that is faith in Jesus. Come on, somebody. Okay. So what are we talking about here? What we just explained to you is what we should be doing every time we come to church. It's Monday. It's Tuesday. Oh, I ain't going to make it this Wednesday. It's Thursday. It's Friday. It's Saturday. All these days, man, I'm thinking of you, and I'm thankful for you, right? Oh, you, you crossed my mind. I'm praying for you. Can't wait to Sunday because I'm going to get to see you. And when I see you, Guess what? I got something for you. I'm going to love on you. I'm going to encourage you. And I'm going to build you up. And while I'm doing all that, we're going to celebrate what we have in common. And that is Jesus. Mm. Oh, yes, it is. Do you see that? Church, that is having church right there. Jesus, watch this. 
Jesus is our common denominator. So do you think like that about your church family? You think about it. First of all, hey, I'm thankful for you. I'm praying for you during the week. I can't wait to see you. And when I do see you, I got something for you. I'm going to build you up. I'm going to love on you. I'm going to encourage you. And then when I do see you and we do and all that, then what we're going to do? We're going to celebrate our mutual faith. We're going to celebrate what we have in common. This is, this is church, church. And this is for good relationships too. Right? This is, why, why am I saying this is church? Well, Paul is talking about the church. So is this how you feel? This is how we should be. If you want, this is how a church should be. If our church begins to be like this, you, we won't have enough chairs in there. We have to build another place. Because folks start caring about folks. And then we start celebrating the one thing we have in common, and that is Jesus. That's what we have in common. Let me tell you something. Let me just, let me just say this, man. We, we can't highlight our differences. That's not going to bring us together. we got to highlight our common denominator, and that's Jesus. Right? If I, if I was in here and I was just, I preached how good Dodge is. Dodge, man, you got to get you a Dodge. You got to get you a Dodge. <laughs> yeah, let's see, see, you start. Then all the Ford folk, they'll, they'll tolerate it for a little while, but they'll leave. I ain't listening to Dodge mess anymore. All the Chevy folks, they'll be like, man, yeah, yeah, I had a Dodge, man, yeah, I own it. I ain't listening to this much. All the Dodge. Then, then guess what? I ain't even going to mention any of the other stuff. That's all the three it is, right? Anyway, <laughs> so, 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 no, we can't forget about, yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's a beast right there. Anyway, yay, pins got, yeah. Anyway, but if I start pre- preaching pins, right, then, then it's just pins, folk. Listen, everybody else will leave. No, listen, we have to come together of what we all have in common, and that is Jesus. That's what's going to make us strong. That's what's going to unify us. we got to stop highlighting differences. It won't ever last. This is how you erase the space between us. You erase the space between us by having the common denominator of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Let's celebrate what we have in common. What do we have in common? Jesus and his word. Mm -hmm. And if we get sideways and anything off of that, that's when we come and we be there for one another. Because, man, I promise you, I may see it one way, you see it another way, but here we go. Let's agree on his way. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. I love this. This is my last scripture. Put it on the screen. Amos 3.3. Think about how powerful this is. Can two walk together unless they agree? How are we going to go to church together if we don't agree on that one thing? Jesus and his word. Right? Yeah. That's true friendship. That's a true relationship. A man, a woman of God, and you're in a relationship with a man and woman of God as a friend, sometimes that's closer than family. But isn't it so cool when you start seeing your whole family Make Jesus their Lord. How cool is it to have a family that has a common denominator of blood and Jesus? Because remember, he said, I made everybody from one blood. (laughs) We all part of the Adams family. (laughs) Tell the truth. We are. And we're all saved by one blood. We all Jesus family. Amen. So, who's going to be there when your net breaks? Who's going to be there when you... Yeah, absolutely, Jesus. Who else? Who, who else is going to be there when your net breaks? Who's going to be there when the burden is too heavy? When you give out? When you don't have the answers? Recognize them. Celebrate them. Amen. If you would, bow your head.
you may have somebody in your life right now and you know they are a relationship that should remain in your life yet there is space between you guys how are you going to erase that space you've got to agree on your common dominator Jesus you got to listen to him if you need to forgive go on and forgive Please forgive. You're forgiven. Why wouldn't you forgive if, you, if you're forgiven? Oh my goodness, look how much you're forgiven for. Look at the grace and mercy that God has showed in your life. Now turn around and show that to them. But then you say, oh, it's their, it's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. Okay, didn't we just read that if you're a man of God, if you're a woman of God, isn't it us, up to us to help restore? Church, ain't no way out of it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Consider others actually more than yourself. Bear one another's burdens. Fulfill the walk of Jesus Christ. Erase the space. Erase the space between you. Be the initiator. And don't let another sun set before you do it. You ain't got nothing else to pray about for them. Do what God's telling you to do. Oh, you'll feel so much better. You'll feel so much better. See, there's people, people in your life that you can call a confidant. And those people are for you. They're for you no matter what. Man, you only have a few of them in a lifetime. You got people in your life that are called constituents. They're not really for you, but they're for what you're for. And that's 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 that could be good. That could be, you know. Then there are people in your life that we call comrades, and they're only there. Because they're against what you're against. And we need to recognize those three different types of people in our life. And your comrades, celebrate them. Those people in your life that are for Jesus, celebrate them. Father, I thank you for this time. I can look out over this, this, this congregation today, and there are so many in here that you have used in my life when I needed encouragement, even when I was ready to give up and quit. You always, always, always send something. I thank you for that. If it wasn't for them, Lord, I don't know where I would be. If it wasn't for my precious wife, I don't know where I would be. I thank you for them. Lord, I pray right now that we would come together as a church. We would be thankful for one another. We would pray for one another. We would, it would be exciting to come to church because we get to see one another. We get to build one another up. We get to encourage one another. And then we get to celebrate you, Jesus, together. Lord, give us your eyes so we can recognize your goodness all over our life through the people that you put in our lives. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this day. Lord, if there's somebody in here that needs to forgive, I pray that that would happen. 
there's somebody in here, Lord, that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, and they don't realize that you were beaten beyond human resemblance for our sin, and you paid our sin debt. Lord, if they don't realize that, I pray that they would come talk to me or somebody they can trust in here. They got to know about you, Lord. You're too good. Thank you for changing my life. And I know others in here will amen that because you've changed their life. So we thank you for another day with family. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. If you would stand. We're going to do the one last song. I pray that right now that you would just take just this few minutes to reflect on those people that, that God has put in your life. If, 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 if they're in here and they're on your mind right now, do something crazy. Go over and tell them thank you, you love them, and encourage them. Did that feeling just come over you like, I'm scared? Okay. Just think how much they need that. It was a blessing to stand up here last week, and you guys appreciated me and Cody. can't tell you what that meant to us. There are other people that need that. I pray if, either if you have children back there or not, you would go back there and those ladies that are watching your kids and go back there and tell them thank you. One of them sitting right here with us today. Miss Christie's always back there. Tell her thank you. I, thank you, sweetie. I love you. What you do is priceless. That's very meaningful. Let's do the Lord's work. If you won't do it in here, you're probably not going to do it out there. Put some practice in. I love y'all. in the meadow and lie by the stream you meet me in the quiet places you meet me in the quiet places your goodness and your mercy follow me all the days of my life all the days of my For I know that you are, are with me. With oil of blessing, you cover my head. You fill me with overflowing. My cup is overflowing. Your goodness. Hey. 
shepherd of my soul, you prepare a table before me, right in front of my enemies. You're the shepherd of my soul, you lead me in the right direction, my comfort and my protection. You're the shepherd of my soul. Your goodness, your mercy will follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life. And I'll dwell in your house for eternity. I'll be there by your side all the days of my life, all the days of my life. I'll be there by your side all the days of my the shepherd of my soul, you lead me in the right direction, my comfort and my protection, you're the shepherd of my soul, you prepare a table before me, right in front You're the shepherd of my soul. You lead me in the right direction. My comfort and my protection. You're the shepherd of my soul. Your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life, and I'll dwell in your house for eternity. I'll be there by your side. I'll be there by your side all the days of my life. All the days. God, I just pray over uh, everyone as they leave today, Lord. I pray that your hand will be upon them, Lord. I 
pray that you would uh, let them start this week um, asking you, Lord, to lead them, to guide them, to direct them, to follow that leading, Lord. Asking you to be the great guide that you are, giving you all the honor, glory, and praise that only you are due. I pray for your great and mighty protection upon the hearts of each and every one that are here today. And Lord, I pray you would show yourself so mighty in every single individual life. And Father God, I again just pray with everything that I have that if there is still in this place anyone who may not realize that they are in need of a Savior, I pray that they would cry out right now understanding that they are lost without you, begging you, Lord, for your great forgiveness and restoration and everlasting peace. That relationship that you created us to have with you, Lord, I pray that they would see as the great need that it is so that they would understand what it means to have that joy and that peace, that fulfillment, and certainly that great love that only you give. We thank you for what you're going to do. We praise you for what you've done in this place today. All glory to you. It's in Jesus' name that I ask and praise. The greatest name above all, your name, Lord. Amen. Have a great day.